Question number six, Dr. Russell Norman. Order. Dr. Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Climate Change Issues and asks, by what percentage will New Zealand's net greenhouse gas emissions increase in the next 10 years, according to the Ministry for the Environment annual report for the year ended June 2013? Mr. Honourable Speaker. Tim Grosser. Mr Speaker, if we take that particular year, we input into it the exact existing Kyoto accounting frameworks, even though they are under negotiation for a new long-term agreement, and we assume for the next 10 years the current extraordinarily low carbon price will drive the ETS, the figure you get is 48 per cent. Change any of those parameters, you get a radically different result. Speaker. Dr Russell Norman, supplementary question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can the Minister therefore confirm that, according to the Government's own statistics and own information, New Zealand's net greenhouse gas emissions will increase by about 50 per cent in just 10 years? Mr Speaker. Honourable Tim Grosser. No, I can confirm that that is a projection based on the assumptions that we discussed in answer to the previous question. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr. Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Why, when the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's latest report calls for urgent action from all countries to reduce emissions in order to avoid the worst effects of climate change, why will his government's policies drive up net emissions by 50 per cent in a decade? Mr. Honourable Speaker. Tim Grosser. Well, we shall have to wait and see. We're discussing the difference between a projection and an eventuality which we cannot foresee. The underlying point here, however, relates, let's repeat this once again, to the shape of the New Zealand forestry cycle, which operates on a 28-year rotation cycle and at that stage in the late 20s will be at its absolute height. After new plantings take place, it will start to decline radically. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Russell Norman. Why, when New Zealand is on track to be the worst performing developed country when it comes to cutting emissions, why is his government not doing more to bring New Zealand's greenhouse gas emissions down? Honourable Tim Grosser. Mr Speaker, New Zealand is reducing its carbon intensity over the last uh, 24 years by approximately 24-25%. We are becoming an increasingly carbon efficient economy, but our gross emissions may be increasing because our economy is growing and the population is growing. And I am quite confident that if we follow the policies of the Green Party and some future government, they will certainly achieve lower emissions, but at the cost of higher unemployment and lower real wages for New Zealanders. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. When the Minister told TVNZ that, quote, we're not playing God on this and natural processes will determine what happens to the adaptation of human beings, is he seriously proposing we just let climate change take its course, leaving our key industries, economy, homes and precious species exposed and at risk? Mr Speaker, Honourable Tim the answer is definitively no. That is not what I said. What I said is the government needs to provide strategic advice based on good science, and we're going to spend about $100 million on this in the years to 2019, and try and move the country along to a sensible adaptation framework. But actually, Mr Speaker, New Zealanders have got a proven record of adaptation to different sources of change. And I could go through numerous examples. My belief is that New Zealanders are better equipped to adapt to climate change than any developed country I can think of. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he stand by his comment to Radio New Zealand that, quote, we have plenty of time, end quote, and how does he square this with other governments' responses to the IPCC report, such as US Secretary of State John Kerry's call for all countries to act dramatically and quickly to reduce net emissions? Well, Mr. Honourable Speaker, Tim Grosser. we're conflating two different issues here. One is the question of the quantum of global mitigation, 
which the planet is undertaking, that is not sufficient. And in that respect, I absolutely would associate ourselves with Mr. Kerry's statement. If we're talking about adaptation, I continue to believe, because the evidence supports this, that New Zealand is extremely well placed over a very long period of time of 100 years to make the necessary adaptation, provided we have sensible policies in place. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Dr. Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Given that New Zealand is on track to increase its net emissions by 50 per cent in the decade ahead, according to the government's own reports, which will make New Zealand the worst performing developed country when it comes to cutting emissions, has the minister now dispensed with the policy of fast following and instead taken it upon himself to be a leader not in emissions reductions but in emissions growth? Mr Honourable Speaker, Tim the Grosser. simple reality is that we're focusing primarily, first of all, on the first Kyoto commitment period and we're extremely confident that New Zealand will meet its international obligations. Beyond that, we're focusing on the period to 2020 where we've put forward a unilateral commitment of minus 5% on 1990 levels, which is considerably ahead of certain other developed countries. Uh, what happens beyond that is something we haven't yet got a position other than the aspirational target of 2050 where we aim to reduce emissions by 50 per cent. Question number seven, Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. Does he